Hey guys, I just got something really cool in the mail from Fender and today we're gonna check it out. Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Matthew. I'm a guitar player. I love playing vintage Fender and Gibson guitars and amplifiers. You'll see some of them behind me, uh, which will be relevant to what we're looking at today. But I also sing, write, and record my own original music. I have two brand new songs out on Spotify, Apple, and Amazon, or wherever you listen to music. If you want to support me and what I'm doing, me and the band would greatly appreciate it. If you check it out, you can search Matthew Scott, or I'll link everything down below. Uh, but today is a really proud day for me because Fender just sent me this brand new guitar. This is a reissue from a new lineup that Fender just launched. And today I'm gonna give you guys my honest opinion on what I think of this guitar, how it plays, how it sounds, and how it compares to a real 1950s or 60s Stratocaster, which I have a few of. I have a 1959 right here. Uh, it's a very similar guitar from 59 to 62. They were pretty much the same guitars. Uh, but this model is the 1961 reissue uh, from the American Vintage Series 2 that Fender just released. There's a number of other guitars uh, from Tellys to Jazzmasters to whatever, you can check them out. Not a lot has changed as far as I can tell from this over say the 62 reissue that Fender had for decades. Um, the main difference I think is really the neck profile on this guitar is a little more accurate to say the 59 to 61 slab board. It's a little bit thinner. And if you're into that kind of, you know, Hendrix thumb over or SRV type thing, I think you will really like this neck. Um, it features a slab board, fret board. It's some kind of rosewood. I don't know what kind, but it does look and feel really nice. Um, it features an alder body, which is correct for the time period. And then you've got your mint green plastics and your standard Stratocaster tremolo setup. All the hardware is, is pretty much consistent for most 50s and 60s strats. So this guitar features a nitrocellulose lacquer paint job, uh, which is similar to the paint on the original guitars, but it's not quite the same. Um, I think there's some plasticizers and who knows what else in the new lacquer that they use. So it doesn't feel exactly like an original 59 Stratocaster uh, and it's not gonna wear exactly the same, but so, you know, to me, it feels a little bit more plastic. It's a little more glossy uh, and it's gonna hold up better than the original nitro lacquer, which was sprayed really thin too. So I think for Fender's demographic, this is probably better. Uh, it's not gonna look like that guitar, you know, in 10 years. Uh, the electronics seem to sound really good. I measured all the pickups at about 5.7K ohms which is really consistent with all my other vintage guitars. And I think that's a big part of the sound of old Stratocasters. They did go ahead and opt for the five-way switch, which they would have used a three-way switch back in the 50s and 60s. Uh, I think this is a proper upgrade. I'm glad Fender did this. I think everyone at this point just wants the five-way switch. I'm gonna go ahead and play this thing for you guys through a 1959 basement and a 1964 Super Reverb, two of my favorite amplifiers ever and we'll see how this thing sounds. Um, I'm really interested to hear from you guys in the comment section because if you're fans of the channel, if you've listened here for a while, you probably have an idea of what this guitar sounds like, my 1959. So uh, let me know what you think of this guitar because all the other variables are the same, but I'm gonna go through all the pickup positions and then I wanna talk to you guys about a few things that maybe I don't like about this guitar.
right guys, well I hope you have enjoyed the video so far. Let me know in the comment section what you think about the tone. I have to say, I think this guitar sounds very good. It has a few issues that I'll talk about in just a moment, but overall I think Fender nailed the sound of a vintage Stratocaster, and I think a lot of that comes from the pickups, which based on the readings for what that's worth, they seem to be very accurate to the original design, looking at the stagger of the magnets, and I'm sure the wiring that they used is pretty accurate. I haven't opened this thing up and looked inside, but um, if you want something that sounds pretty vintage, uh, this, this is really a good choice. Now, I've left this guitar exactly as I got it from the factory because I wanted to see how Fender would set it up, and they have the bridge floating just a little bit, so I usually deck my tremolo all the way flat to the body so I can only use the vibrato going this way. Uh, but that works for me and it stays in tune better, I think. Fender has left this floating just a little bit so you can go both ways with the tremolo arm. Um, I probably would adjust that if it were me, but I wanted to demo this guitar exactly as I found it. Now this guitar has, it says vintage tall frets on the website, but they really feel vintage. Maybe they're slightly taller, but they feel like a very vintage style fret and that's of course, not what I like to use on this guitar. I have like an equivalent to 6100 jumbo fret, which is what I prefer on rosewood fretboards. I might use on a maple neck like a 6105. Um, I think this guitar would be great with either of those fret options. For me, I'm very used to playing jumbos and taller, wider frets. So I struggled a little bit with playing this guitar with these size frets on it. Other than that, the action is, is pretty much like medium to low. It feels really good. It plays very good, all things considered. Um, you know, I think Fender could have put a little bigger fret on here and probably would not have, you know, angered the, the Fender purist. Kind of like with the five-way switch, you know, just a couple modern appointments that is gonna make the guitar play better for most people. But some people may like these frets, I don't know. Now I only have really a couple complaints on this guitar and I don't think Fender can really do much about it. Uh, but the paint job on this guitar is really flawless. I think it's a very high quality professional job. Um, it does feel a little bit different than my original Strats. It feels, you know, a little harder, a little glossier. And from what I understand, they cannot use the original blend of lacquer they used back in the day due to regulations or laws or whatever. So there's really nothing they can do. And honestly, like I said, the, the people who are buying this guitar, I don't think they want a guitar with a super thin nitro finish that's gonna look like this, you know, in a couple of years. So um, it's really not in Fender's best interest to, to paint them like that. But it does feel a little glossier and it feels more like a reissue guitar, you know, you can, I mean, you can imagine on the back of the neck, it's a little sticky, it's a little glossy feeling. Um, and like on this 59, all of the paint is, is worn away from the back of the neck. And that's one thing I love about vintage guitars. You just can't beat that feel. Um, other than that, the guitar also weighs about eight pounds. I immediately knew when I picked it up. And you know, for you Les Paul guys, that's, that's nothing but, um, I really think strats are the best when they weigh about seven pounds, maybe seven and a half pounds. And it's just a little bit heavier than that. Um, and from what I've read online, actually, a, a lot of these guitars are coming in, in in the low eight pound range. And I think it's just really hard to get lightweight quality woods in the production numbers that, that Fender would need. Um, so I've been seeing that, that a lot on the internet. You know, eight pounds, it's not too bad. You know what I mean? It's, it's a pound heavier than that guitar. It's not a whole lot, but you wear this guitar on stage for three hours, you know, you might feel it over time. Some people will laugh at me for that. But overall, I think it's a really great guitar. Uh, with a few modifications, it would be very playable. And I think the sound is, is where Fender really got it right, which is what matters. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. Again, let me know in the comments section what you think of the sound of this guitar. Uh, and thank you very much to Fender. Uh, it's kind of a childhood dream to be able to work with Fender in any capacity. So 
so when this showed up at my doorstep, that was that was a pretty uh, incredible moment, and I'm, I'm grateful to be able to share it with you guys here on YouTube, and uh, and know that it's only possible if you guys are here and, and watch my videos. So thank you all so much. Uh, see you guys in the next episode. Check out the songs if you want. I'll link everything down below, uh, or the music video that was that was just posted a few weeks ago too. So you can check that out. Thanks, guys. Peace.